I'm going to talk tonight for the time that we have. I don't know how long I'll speak. We'll just stop when it gets done. But developed a series on the path to freedom. How many of you knows what it feels like to be free? Yes. Hopefully everyone here tonight knows what it feels like to be free. Because that's what we need to be in our Christian walk of life is we need to be free. We need to have freedom. I always say that the greatest freedom that mankind can ever know is freedom of yourself. Free to be free of yourself. To be set free of your own self. You know, it's easy to look into other people's lives and see the freedom that other people need. But sometimes we need to discover our own freedom. How to free ourselves and how to be set free from bondages. And so tonight, we're going to discover the path to freedom. And I've got about seven or eight lessons on this message. You see, when we begin our lives, we are very much like a new car that is just off the showroom floor. Have you ever gone out and bought a brand new car? Maybe not brand new, but new to you. The car is shiny, it looks very nice, and you know, perhaps no scratches on it, and the paint is very shiny, looks very nice, looks like a very nice automobile. Well, when we begin our walk of life, we're like a new car that just comes off of the showroom floor. However, over the course of time, life has a way of bringing its dings and its rust into our lives. And so over a course of time, we might not look like that new shiny car anymore. We might begin to look like an old worn out vehicle. You see, life can literally wear you out. We then wind up looking life like we are that old worn out car. Life brings its scratches, life brings its bruises, life brings its hurts. And every person in this building tonight have been through situations that have left emotional pains in your life. We all have hang-ups in our lives. They keep us in neutral in some of the areas that we are struggling with. Always say that life never stays the same. Either you're moving forward or you're digressing. Nothing stays in neutral form. Either you're moving forward or you're going backward. You may go through a period where it's just feeling like it's neutral, but either you are progressing or you are degressing in life. We all excel in certain areas and seem to go nowhere in other areas. We are all different, yet we all share the same common need. And that is we all experience, we all need spiritual and emotional freedom. Most people have habits that they would like to say goodbye to. Hang-ups, hurts, and negative habits. They make us like that old rusted car. The goal is diving into this material is to get us back into the new condition that we were once in. That is what we call a restoration project. You ever seen people build, take an old car and it's all rusted and the seats are all gone out of it and looks like nothing could be done with that old car. And somebody comes along and they buy it and they see a vision, they see something that they can make that old vehicle become. And they restore it. It's called a restoration project. This is what we hope to wind up like. We hope to get our engines running better. Tonight we're going to look at the first step of freedom. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 4. If you have them tonight, if not, we're going to bring them up over the overhead. But in Luke chapter 4, very common passage of Scripture in verse 17 and 18. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. 
Now I want to stop here and say just a second, thank God that he preached the gospel to the poor because otherwise not many people would be serving God because sometimes the rich have a hard time serving God. So I'm thankful tonight that he was preaching to the poor. And I know this does not, not, just does not mean poor financially, but it's talking about different areas of being poor. He said, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives. We as people can become captive to things that are binding us, such as sin. And recovering of sight to the blind. Due to the adverse circumstances, people often cannot see any hope and cannot even see a positive future. He goes on to say, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now, a bruise is caused by a sharp blow to the body. What a bruise does is it causes hemorrhaging underneath the skin. If you've ever had a bruise pop up on your arm or your leg or any part of your body, you can push on that bruise and it causes some pain because a bruise is tender. It is sensitive. If you are severely bruised, you are stiff. You are hurting on the inside. Well, people all around us today have internal bruises that are going on in our lives. There are bruises that are a result of verbal abuse, maybe physical abuse. People say things to, to hurt people, and they say things about you, and when it gets to you, it creates a bruise in your life. I want to ask you tonight, have you ever been let down by somebody that you trusted in your life? If you have ever been let down by somebody that you have trusted in your life, that creates a bruise in your life. It creates a big bruise in your soul. Jesus said that he would set at liberty those that are bruised. This means that we are not completely free when we, he when we have unhealed bruises in our lives. If you have ever been mistreated by an employer and you feel like you're getting the short end of the stick, that probably left a bruise in your life. Anyone who has ever found out that they have been cheated on, maybe by a spouse or, or some kind of way like that, that creates a bruise in your life. And these types of wounds can also lead us to bitterness and hate and anger in our lives. And so that's when we are not free of ourselves because we have become full of fear, we have become full of hate, we have become full of anger, we have become full of bitterness, and we have become full of resentment, and therefore we are not free from ourselves. These emotions make the pain even worse, and they become like internal toxins that destroy us from the inside toward the outside. There was a little story of a man who wanted to take his Sunday afternoon nap, but the only problem is that his little boy was in the room and he's wanting to play. So to resolve the issue, Dad looked in the newspaper and he cut out a little picture of a globe. He cut the picture out and he tore it up into little pieces and he threw it down on the floor and he told his boy, he said, I want to play a game with you. And he said, I just tore up the picture and he said, this is a picture of a globe, but he said, here lies all the pieces on the ground, and that's a puzzle. And he said, I want you to take the pieces of that puzzle, and I want you to put it back together and make the globe that I have just cut out of the paper. So dad thought it would take him about an hour to do this so he could go ahead and take his nap. About 10 or 15 minutes later, the boy woke up his dad and said, Dad, I've put the picture back together again. He said, I'm done. Dad said, how did you do it so quickly? The boy said, I just flipped the picture over and there was a picture of a man and so all I had to do was put the picture of the man back together and when I did, the whole thing, the whole world came back together. 
That's what we are wanting to do with this series that we are going to begin discussing over the next few weeks. It's called The Pathway to Freedom. When we work on the inside of our hearts, we will see the entire world differently when we get free from ourselves. When the emotions of our soul are bruised, it has a way of causing everything to seem negative to us. Why? Because our internal filter hasn't been changed in a while and the Spirit of God cannot flow freely, freely through us and so therefore we need spiritual freedom. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse 25 it says, In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. I want us to notice two words in those scriptures, the word recover and the word snare. In other words, Satan has snares or traps that he wants to get us stranded in as we go through life. There are things that bruise us, there are things that bind us, and there are things that hurt us. A sinful life will do that. We are thankful, aren't you thankful tonight that Jesus Christ came to set us free? I'm so thankful tonight that I serve a Jesus that even though all the things that I go through in my life, he has come so that I might be set free. Give him praise tonight. You see, when we come into the kingdom, we come in with a lot of bruises. We all need continual maintenance to stay fresh. Wouldn't it be nice if when you bought that car, that shiny car, that all you had to do was change the oil in it one time and that would take care of it for the rest of its life? Well, we all know that that's not a reality. So also Jesus wants to work on us in, on a regular basis to keep our lives in good shape. You see, just because you came to Jesus X number of years ago doesn't mean that it's all over. This is an everyday adventure. Every day when I wake out of bed, I'm in a new relation. I, I'm in a new day with Jesus. Maybe it's the same relation I've always been in with him, but I've got to renew myself each and every day. I've got to pray. I've got to read the word of God. I've got to put those things into my spirit because if I don't, everyday life will get me down and before long, I will be destroyed in my walk with God. To recover means to get better, to get out of the trap, to get out of the snare. In the book of Isaiah chapter 57, it said, For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth and smote him. I hid me and was wroth. And he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. In verse 18, I have seen his eyes and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. What is he saying? He is saying that he is not happy with sin and with man choosing his own path. That even God, that, e that even can make God upset. However, God says he will heal him, he will lead him, and he will restore and comfort his life. God is telling you that if you have ever been hurt, that he wants to heal you. For some, you don't have to look back very far to remember where you were hurt. And you need a healing in your life. How many of us can remember when we were the one who was hurt by somebody? I mean, if I ask for a show of hands tonight, we all hate being hurt by somebody. We say to ourselves, or we, all hurt, we also hate to hurt somebody else. Usually it's not our intent to hurt someone else, or at least I hope that it's not, but sometimes we unintentionally hurt somebody when we did not mean to do that whatsoever. Well, the fact is, is none of us hopefully like to hurt somebody, and so once we have hurt someone, we might ask ourselves, why did I do that? 
Often hurts come intentionally. Nevertheless, they are still hurts and they are still pains that I sow into the life of somebody. Sometimes we do things that we should not do and we even say things to ourselves, don't do that, and yet we find ourselves doing it anyway. We don't know why we did it, but the bottom line is, is we do it because we want to do it. The scripture tells us that we have all sinned, we have all blown it, we have all made mistakes, we have all been hurt by someone else, and we have all at times hurt someone else. We are going to talk about how to overcome these hurts in these series that we're going to begin tonight on the pathway to freedom. We will address overcoming habits, hang-ups, and hurts. You may say, yeah, but I have it all together. I don't have any hang-ups in my life. Well, the fact is, is that we all have hang-ups in our lives. And if you think you don't, then maybe that's your hang-up. And you need to get over it and move on with life and realize that every there is nobody that is perfect, but we all have imperfections and we all have hang-ups in our lives. Look at things like overworking. That might be a hang-up in your life. When you're overworking, you're neglecting your family. You're neg neglecting the family unit. Now, I'm not saying that perhaps you might have to go out and, and make a living to 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 provide for your family. I'm not saying anything against that at all. But sometimes a person can become a workaholic until they neglect the ones that they love and they neglect their family. How about overspending? How about overspending? Now that might touch root to many of us. How about anger and rage? How about uh, how about some other issues like insecurities in your life? Many of us face insecurities in, in our lives because maybe we've had those insecurities for 30 and 40 or even 50 years and we've been living with those insecurities for so many years until they have just become a part of our lives. We have to move past the insecurities in order for God to allow us to be free in our lives. How about the need to control, perfectionism? How about procrastination? How about overeating? How about undereating? As you can look at me tonight, you can see that I don't have a problem with undereating. My problem would probably be overeating. But these are things that we have to deal with in our lives. How about fear? How about grief? How about anxiety? How about codependency? Enabling someone to be codependent upon a substance. How about sexual addictions? How about hurtful relationships? How about alcoholic and, how, alcohol and drugs? How about guilt and divorce and gambling and abuse? Hypochondria, which is persistent conviction that one is likely to become ill, often involving symptoms when illness is neither present nor likely. Have you ever met people like that that are in constant fear that they might get sick, that they might catch this, that they might catch that, that they might die of cancer, that they might die of this? We need freedom from ourselves. First, we need to realize if you want to recover out of the snare of the devil, the first thing you and I have to do is we're going to have to realize that I am not God. Do you know the difference between you and God tonight? The difference between you and God is that sometimes we think we can play God, but I guarantee you that God will never think that he is you or that he is me. You have to say, I admit that I am powerless and I cannot stop on my own. When I was suffering from alcoholism, so many times I tried to quit on my own. I thought it was an act of willpower. I thought that willpower could do it. If I just wanted to quit, then I could stop. But how many of you have had things in your life and you've come to realize that I've tried to stop it on my own long enough and I never stop doing what I want to stop doing because willpower alone will not make it happen. In fact, it's the first step of Alcoholics Anonymous. You have to say that I admit that I am powerless over the situation in my life. 
You see, our pride does not want to go to God for help, but without help, we are going to remain stuck in our situation. Three aspects to the road to recovery are number one, the cause, number two, the consequence, and number three, the cure. What is the cause of my situation? The reason I have these hang-ups in my life, please bring up the overhead in Romans chapter 7, is because I have a hang-up in my sin nature. You see, inside of every one of us is a sin nature, and it's a nature on the inside of us that wants to do the wrong thing. Paul writes and he says, For that which I do, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now I want to ask you that tonight, can anybody relate to what Paul has just said? What I do, why do I do what I do when I hurt somebody? Why do I do what I do when I snap at somebody? Why do I do what I do when I overeat, when I know that I need to push that second plate to the side? We hurt ourselves the most, and Paul is saying, the things that I want to do, I often do not do, but the things that I do not want to do, I often find myself doing. The Message Bible says it this way, what I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way, but then I act another, doing things I absolutely despise. So if I can't be trusted to figure out what is best for myself and then do it, it becomes obvious that God's command is necessary. But I need something more. For if I know the law but still can't keep it, and if the power of sin within me keeps sabotaging my best intentions, I obviously need help. You see, we live in a culture that tells us that we are supposed to be tough and we don't need anybody for help. We're supposed to be an individual that we can just square our shoulders up. Now sometimes we do need to square our shoulders up as an individual and we need to face the future for ourselves. But sometimes there comes a point in life where I have to throw up my hands and I have to say, I need help in my life. I have tried stopping this thing long enough and every time I do what I don't want to do, I realize that I am powerless within myself. You see, our culture sends us the continual message that in order to be awesome, you have to stand alone. That is the John Wayne and the Rambo mentality. But it's not God's mentality. It's not what the Bible says. It's not the Bible way. The Bible way is to seek God for help, and that is not standing alone, my friend. You see, for men, it is especially hard for us to break that male ego and say, I'm needing help or that I really need God I'm really not the master of my own destiny it it can be very hard to say I really do need help it's difficult for a man to do that and so what Paul was talking about is that because it is the sin nature it is the sin nature that causes us to do wrong and every person alive has that common problem why is there so much chaos in countries like Sudan and Libya and the places that we have just seen that killed some of our you know innocent men from America our ambassador it's because of a sin nature 
It is very simple, yet very difficult to understand at the same time. Simple because we know what the answer is, but it's difficult because we try to align our emotions to the thoughts of God and humble ourselves before God on a regular basis. Knowing what to do is a very easy part, but actually doing what we know to do is the most difficult part. You see, the first step to freedom is understanding the cause, and that is the sin nature that liveth on the inside of us. It's the desire to be in the place of God and the control of our own lives at the same time. The thought of giving up the control is scary for most people, yet freedom begins in total surrender to Jesus Christ. We say, I don't want anybody telling me what is right and what is wrong. I want to call my own shots and make my own rules. I am the king of my own kingdom. I want to be my own boss. I live the way I want to live. If it feels good, then I can do it. Can anybody relate to hearing that from anyone? Can anybody relate to that? Perhaps this was the attitude that some of us had before we knew Jesus Christ. I call it BC, before Christ. You see, the more insecure person, the more insecure the person is, the more control they want. And the more out of control things get, it heightens their sense of insecurities. The more insecure you are, the more you want to control yourself. The more you want to control other people. The more you want to control your environment. You are driven to play God. The problem with this is that it leads to many bruises both in your life and into the life of other people. Sadly, those whom you love are being bruised because you want to control situations because of your insecurity. God says of all the trillions of acres started in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had the same problem. God put Adam and Eve in a total paradise. Think about it. They were in paradise, and yet they start controlling it. God said of all the trillions of acres on this planet, they're out there for you, but this little tree over there, God said, hands off of that tree. They're out there in the Garden of Eden with, I mean, trillions of acres of land. They could have gone anywhere they wanted to go, and yet God said, keep your hands off of that one tree. And they said, I want to have some control here. And Adam and Eve, they wanted to play God, and they took it upon themselves to try and take control. You see, in order to be successful in life, we have to confess ourselves over and over and over and over again. We have to say to ourselves, you're not God, you're not God, you're not God. And no matter how much we have to crucify the human will that is within this inside of us, we have to rise up and robe our submission and ultimately our blessing because it is right it is the right thing to do with our maker Jesus Christ the key to life is to get our hands off of the wheel and it is it is to don't sweat it don't react to it just give it to God and let God do what do what he wants to do with it let God be God and let us be who God has called us to be how do we play God? We play God by denying our humanity and trying to control everything for selfish reasons by not admitting the fact that we need God and so therefore we set ourselves up for failure. You see, love is seeing past the faults of each other. When we give God control, we will love like He loves. Why is it that we work so hard to control our image? We really care a lot about what people think of us. The more a person is in your life, the more you will care what they think about you. You see, it's hard for us to sometimes get close to people because we are afraid that they are going to see us for who we really are. And so we put on our best for each other. We want to make sure that people will like who they see. We want to be accepted and we want to be popular. And so we deny our weakness and we deny our feeling. 
And we say, I'm not worried. I'm not angry. I'm not afraid. And so what we do is we put up a fake front. We want to control other people so that other people will think good about us. We need to get free of ourselves. We need to be free of resentment. We need to be free of anger. We need to be free of bitterness. We need to be free of strife in our lives. You say, you don't know what happened to me as a child. No, I do not know. But I do know that in order to get free of your situation, you're going to have to let it go and you're going to have to move on. You're going to have to accept forgiveness to whoever did something to you in your life and quit holding the resentment in your life. You say, I've been hurt by a spouse and I was deeply wounded. I understand that. I understand that you have been bruised and that you are wounded, but Jesus has come to set you free. Yes. Jeremy, if you will come and play something softly, please. I want to close tonight with this verse of Scripture in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things of earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye has always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Jesus came to this earth and He took on a body of flesh and He robed Himself in a man even though He was in perfection. He came and He suffered and He suffered for us tonight. I don't know about you this evening, but I want to be free. I want freedom in Jesus Christ. I don't want to be bound by all the conditions of this world and, and all the things that go on in my life. And I know every person here tonight has a reason that if you want to, you can live in bitterness, you can live in resentment because life throws those things in our way and it's easy to become bitter and it's easy to become angry and it's easy to live under those conditions. But Jesus came to set us free. He came to give us freedom in life so that we didn't have to live with the resentment, so that we didn't have to live with all the pain. 